All right, guys, how's it going? A new age here, your coach of the Animal Valley Agrons, and this is our team preparation video for our week three battle against Jacob and the Green Bay Pikachus. Jacob is the founder, I guess you could call it, creator of the WPA, um, and he is an insanely good battler. Um, to avoid any spoilers, Jacob has made it to the final battle of the MPCC, um, which is the league I was in before this one, so you guys can go check that out and watch that last battle. I already know what happens. Anyways, um, so yeah, <laughs> um, <clears throat> there are a lot of things I'm really afraid of on his team. Uh, also, a lot of things... I kind of really don't expect him to bring uh, as well because um, like I said I want to talk about his team first because uh, that's what I've started to do is team build for the opposing team uh, so let me see real quick where is it at where is that um, so yeah this is what I the team I'm expecting him to bring not exactly the moveset or anything this is just for me to kind of like practice against um but these are like the six pokemon i'm expecting so i'm expecting uh halucha for sure also that's his team on the right um <clears throat> i'm expecting halucha for sure uh just because i have so many fighting types or sorry i have so many steel types as well as halucha outspeeds all of my team um it can hit conkledur as well uh, Porygon 2. It's just, I mean, there's some things that I guess I could see it not being used for, but even if it's like uh, Citrus Berry Unburdened, then it outspeeds my Mega Alakazam as well and can like one shot that with whatever the hell it wants. So, Halucha is just a real big threat and I figure it can do very well against my team. So, I'm expecting him to bring that. Um, Nine Tails again for sure. I have a lot of steel types uh, that can help against Vaporeon as well, and I don't exactly have a fire resist other than, I mean, Vaporeon, which he gets Sword Beam for, and Flygon, who I think could take it well. Um, and we do speed tie, but I didn't want something that was going to speed tie uh, Ninetales. And I could have brought Scarf Flygon, but I really decided against it because a lot of the rest of his team is pretty good against Flygon. For example, like Mega Altaria, Flygon can't do anything to that. Um, actually, Flygon does kind of decent against this team. I don't know. Maybe if I battle him again, I'll bring it. Uh, but then Fortress as well. Um, just as like a hazard setter. Maybe even a way to get rid of hazards, but I don't really think so. Um, I mean, it could. You just kind of throw Rapid Spin on there, but... Um, that is definitely a good hazard setter against my team. Um, nothing I have can really one-shot it very well either, unless I brought like Zebstrika with Overheat. But I'm not bringing Zebstrika. He has a lot of things that can handle that well. I actually considered it just because of speed, but we'll, you'll see what we decide to do after. Um, I think Rodham could be good, but I don't know. It depends on how afraid he is of Excadrill. Otherwise, I feel like Rodham can do well. Um, it can hit my Vaporeon. I can't really do anything to that back. Um, it can be good against my Steelix, uh, Crustal, and it could burn things like my Flygon, maybe even Slurpuff, uh, just stuff like that. It could also burn my Steelix too. Uh, but then again, like I do have a lot of things that could do good against it. Excadrill, uh, Alakazam having like Energy Ball. Um, I'm pretty sure Sigilyph gets Energy Ball as well. And then Zipstrika with like Motor motor Drive or uh, Lightning Rod or whatever. Like if I did decide to bring that, um, I would basically have Electric Immunity and Water Immunity through Vaporeon and Zipstrika. Uh, so I could see why he wouldn't if he doesn't bring that. Um, same for Shiftry. <clears throat> like, Shiftry I could definitely see. Um, probably a Scarf set if anything. Because then... I actually don't think Scarf outspeeds Mega Alakazam. Um, but just having access to things like a really strong knockoff, uh, that could do well against Sigilyph. Uh, I don't really have good switch-ins for knockoff, and my team is really like heavily reliant on items, so like Porygon 2 getting knocked off wouldn't be good. 
uh, and then it can hit um, Vaporeon very hard as well. Um, and I figure he might bring this as a defogger if he does bring it. Um, because Fortress has kind of a lot of options against me. So I feel like he might not want to bring this as a Rapid Spinner. He might just leave the uh, Hazards to Shiftry. Um, and then last, Nidoking. Um, I feel like he kind of has to bring this for sure. Uh, just because it does so much work on my team. Just all the coverage it, it gets. Like it can hit Steelix. Um, I mean, maybe Superpower for Porygon 2 if he wanted to go that route. Maybe if I was already knocked off, then yeah, that could do good. Uh, Vaporeon, Sigilyph, um, like Thunderbolt, Ice Beam, Earth Power for Zebstrika, Ice Beam for Flygon. I mean, it just gets all kinds of coverage and hits way too hard. Uh, so I could definitely see him bringing that. Uh, but I do have some things that are not bad against Nidoking. Uh, so that's kind of what I'm expecting him to bring. Um... The only one, I really do expect him to bring Shiftry, just because, like I said, Knockoff is really strong, and I would kind of have to switch out a lot against this, especially because it's, like, decently fast. The only one that I could see him not really bringing for sure is Rodham. Um, <clears throat> but, anyways, anyways. Where is my team at? Okay. So, this is the team I decided to bring. We're going with Porygon 2, Conkleder, Vaporeon, Steelix, Sigilyph, and Excadrill. Now... I built this team a while back, not a while back, but earlier in the week, and I can't explain exactly my mentality about all of it, but um, I know for sure I was looking through my Pokemon and his Pokemon, and I decided in the end, um, I think Trick Room was my best option because he has a lot of pretty decently fast Pokemon. The only fast Pokemon I have are Alkazam for sure, Zebstrika who I'm not bringing, um, I mean Flygon, but like I said, I don't think it does well against his team, and then uh, Sigilyph, which is not exactly like a sweeper, <clears throat> and I'm more just afraid because of things like Unburden, Halucha, Dragon Dance, Altaria, Ninetales is fast, Miss Magius is fast, uh, Cryogonal is fast, and then like potential like Scarf Nidoking, or I was watching his team build video, like he could even um, agility baton pass into Nido King. So then there's like a lot more speed on that than there should be. I decided, you know what? I didn't even realize this, but two of my Pokemon get access to Trick Room. And I figured if that was going to be anything to surprise him, um, it would be that Trick Room. So we're going with the Trick Room team and it's, I think it's going to be a lot of fun. Um, so let me see, let me see. I'll go down the order of the list that I described them in. So, all right, so first off, we got Sigilyph with Trick and the Choice Scarf. Uh, basically because I'm really afraid of Halucha setting up on me, uh, even though we do have Trick Room, um, and I did EV Porygon to be able to take High Jump Kick, it can only take it to a certain extent. And if it gets its item knocked off, basically Halucha can kind of run through my team. Uh, so I wanted an answer for that right away. Um, so I decided on Choice Scarf Sigilyph, I gave it enough speed to outspeed, um, well, I mean, since it's Scarfed, it would already outspeed Halucha, uh, but for afterwards, I have enough speed to outspeed, uh, Needle King still, and, uh, Rodham, I believe? Just all the stuff that's in, like, the 80s, high 80s, uh, stuff like that, because otherwise, I don't outspeed his stuff anyways, so there's not really a point, uh, so yeah. Basically things like that, like Nido King, uh, Shiftry, all that stuff. Granted, Shiftry does one-shot me with the Sucker Punch, which is another reason why I think you would bring it. Uh, Sucker Punch just does so much work. Um, but yeah, alright. So I brought it, if anything, to trick the Halucha, because it'll be a lot easier to deal with if it's stuck in one move, especially if it's a setup Halucha that negates like half of its attacks right there. And it makes it so it can't get an Unburden boost, because it won't be losing its item, or consuming it like if it was a barrier or anything. Um, and then Trick Room, um, basically this is like my offensive Trick Room setter. Um, it has enough speed so I could come in on the Silver Thing set of Trick Room. And then um, I decided on Roost and Air Slash as my last few moves because I wanted recovery just because I do have Trick Room. So I didn't want my only, I didn't want this to die fast and then it's all on Porygon to set up Trick Room. Um, I wanted Sigilyph to be able to come in and get some HP and then set up Trick Room later if it could. 
Um, so I can only decide on one attacking move. I just ended up going with the stab air slash because otherwise coverage would get too tricky. Um, he doesn't really have a flying resist other than Rodham, I think, on his team. Unless Ice resists flying, then Cryogonal, yeah. Um, but I don't think I would really leave this thing in on Cryogonal. Um, but Air Slash actually does like a solid 40 or so percent to Fortress if it's like physically defensive. And I have a chance to flinch. Um, so, oh, also Rodham being a flying resist. But again, I don't think I would leave this in on Rodham. Um, so... That's why I decided on Air Slash, just because of the speed and then the chance to flinch and his decent stab um, is why I settled on Air Slash. Also, um, I decided to make it max HP, um, enough speed to outspeed what I said I needed to, and then um, the rest in special defense, just because I looked into like how much damage Needle King does to me, and since I am faster, um, I could potentially try to like stall it out and like roost before it goes for ice beam or thunderbolt and then it won't do as much damage to me um so it kind of lets me take on a few other pokemon just being specially defensive because his team is very special also things like nine tails um i could just take some hits better and i don't necessarily have to switch out every time because really his only physical hitters are like altaria and shiftry and halucha halucha we could take all the hits uh, unless it has Stone Edge, but if it's a setup one, it's probably Acrobatics High Jump Kick, so we do wall that. Um, and then Altaria, if it kind of sets up on us, like, I won't stand Air Slash because it's going to do nothing. And if it sets up on us, it kind of blows us back with, like, Return if it's physical. Um, so I decide Specially Defensive, Max Speed, Max HP, it's like a supportive set. More so than an offensive set. Um, also, something I noted to myself while I was testing the team is... I won't hesitate as well if he leads Fortress to trick the Fortress because my team is actually very weak to spikes and I do have to switch out a lot because I have to bring in my Trick Room Setters and then switch out to my Trick Room Sweepers. So if he gets all of his spikes up, it actually puts me in a pretty bad position. So I won't be afraid to trick the Fortress to potentially nullify it and make it so he doesn't just get to set up spikes whenever he wants to. Um, so Sigilyph and Halucha probably the ones I'd want to trick. Uh, also Nido King, so that way it doesn't have as much coverage, that would be easier as well. Uh, so those three, I think, uh, if I could trick, I would definitely take that opportunity. Alright, so next up, next up, next up, next up, we got Excadrill right here. Alright, so basically my thoughts with this set was um, this is going to be an attacker for when Trick Room isn't up. Um, I gave it max HP, uh, enough speed to outspeed all of those 80s Pokemon, because otherwise I don't outspeed the 90 and above anyways, or he doesn't really have any 90s, but the Pokemon that get, that get into 100, I don't outspeed them. But this will outspeed Ronum, Nidoking, um, Shiftry as well, so all those kind of Pokemon. Um, but I decided on Okaberry, just because if he is choice specs we don't live a fire blast if he's life orb fire blast i do have a chance to live it um and this is just if i'm put into this situation um then i could potentially live it get off an earthquake and then it's gone um if he is like choice scarfed then we for sure live a hit from him and we can hit him with iron head or sorry with earthquake uh, so that's really all that's for. That's more so just because I couldn't decide on an item. Um, also, I didn't want Air Balloon because... I don't know. I felt like I would be doing so much switching in this game. I felt like Air Balloon wouldn't last long enough. And also, I like the idea of a berry because it does potentially let me bluff a Scarf. So it, say I sent this out on Ninetales. If we know his isn't Scarf, he could think, Oh, well, he sent this out on my Ninetales. So it's got to be Scarfed. So what that does let me do is potentially switch up my moves on something he brings in to try and counter this Pokemon. Uh, so I do like the idea of the mind games there. Uh, so I gave it Iron Head just to hit things like Altaria, uh, Cryogonal, uh, Halucha, things like that. Basically Earthquake takes care of everything else. else uh, Earthquake, Earthquake one-shots Needle King, 
uh, nine tails as well that's another reason too i really like this set because i don't need attack investment to be able to one shot those things and earthquake almost one shots a physically defensive rodham if he's not physically defensive it dies um if he is it puts it so low that i could come in and revenge kill it with anything else so i'm not too worried uh rapid spin this is my only way to get rid of hazards i'm only bringing this because i don't know i'm hoping that it'll be enough to help me get rid of the hazards um and other than that i couldn't decide on another move to go for because uh rock slide doesn't do too much this game otherwise like iron head just hits that kind of stuff so i decided to go with magnet rise because what it does do is let me potentially be able to stay in on needle king if say he was scarf needle king and we magnet rise predicting a switch or something like that just like really weird scenarios or even altaria if it only has earthquake to hit us we do have speed altaria before it boosts so we can magnet rise and then it's forced into a bad situation um so I definitely like the idea of Magnet Rise for Excadrill. So then, let's see, we got Max Spadev Vaporeon once again. I actually looked at the calcs against a, um, a Specs um, Ninetales, and we can actually eat up hits fairly well. Like, Solar Beam, we don't exactly eat up, but we could definitely take one pretty decently and potentially get our HP back with Protect. To be able to live another one uh which means we could wish and heal against it um so yeah basically spadef uh vaporeon is uh, mostly for that but then also helps against shiftry as well and cryogonal if he does decide to bring that also altaria uh, i could stay in take a hit for sure if it's special and skull try and burn him uh same with needle king i could even take a thunderbolt from needle king and skull skull does a lot to needle king um so that's as far as like the EV is in the build, I went for it. Otherwise, its moves are Heal Bell, Wish, Scald, and Protect. Again, I felt like I only needed Scald just because what it doesn't hit super effectively, um, I could definitely have a chance to uh, burn. So I'm cool with that. Um, and then, let's see. And then I decided to go for uh, Heal Bell because for one, he has a lot of status on his team and in case uh, Conkledur or Steelix or Excadrill gets burned or something, I can heal it, uh, cause I'm, we're not bringing a Guts Conkledur this week. Um, also it lets me attempt to 1v1 Blissey, just because, uh, just because it can try and Toxic stall me, and I do feel like that's something that he could bring with, uh, the Blissey. So this makes it so it can't just Toxic and then Soft Boiled non-stop against me. Um, so it helps Vaporeon as well as the rest of the team out very well. Um, and then protect obviously to get off the wishes and all that stuff also protect could potentially help against uh something like halucha if he has high jump kick on that um just kind of scouting for some things so yeah that's the vaporeon set i feel like it does pretty well against uh his team porygon so far has not let us or sorry i read porygon on the list next vaporeon has not let us down so far it does a great job doing what it does all right, so next up as my bulky Trick Room setter, we got Porygon 2. Uh, I really like the set, actually. Um, basically, as far as the EVs go, I couldn't decide between uh, HP or... Sorry, I couldn't decide between like physically defensive and specially defensive because I did have it full physical at first to be able to take high jump kicks and stuff from Halucha, but with it split down the middle, I am a little bit more defensive because I'm bold. Um, I can for sure take a high jump kick from Halucha. Um, but I wanted to have some special defense as well, just because of things like Needle King uh, being able to wall me, or not be able to wall me, be able to wall break me. Uh, I didn't want it to have that opportunity, and I wanted to be able to switch into things if I needed to, no matter what the attack was. So then I could switch in and then get off a Trick Room. And then of course recover the same as Sigilith to be able to maintain my trick room and be able to come in and use it whenever i wanted uh try attack i like just because it's stab um i also decided to give porygon download this week just because i don't really feel like i benefit from any of the abilities that we get here especially things like unburden and chlorophyll where those just give me speed that impacts me like negatively under uh, trick room and a lot of his pokemon have levitate as well that doesn't really matter other than like needle king trying to earth power me but it can sludge wave me for like the exact same damage or even more so 
I really thought download would work better. It also helps because a lot of his Pokemon are uh, very even as far as defense and special defense goes. So either this could potentially tell me if uh, he is more of a like defensive or especially defensive build. Um, that could kind of help me scout out like the EVs and stuff on his Pokemon. It's just like more knowledge to get. Porygon 2 is really good with trace or download, like helping you get knowledge about the other, um, about the opponent's Pokemon. And then the last move I decided to give was Magic Coat, just because if I did want to lead uh, potentially with Porygon 2 and say he led Fortress, I don't have any hazards on my team. I didn't bring Stealth Rock or Spike or anything just because I wanted to focus on the Trick Room, and I figure he would have reliable ways to get rid of hazards and he's a good player so I figured he wouldn't let them just stay there like that. So I didn't want to focus so much on the hazards this game, I wanted to focus more on the trick room and making sure that was solid um, while going up against him. So what this does do is uh, Fortress is also a Pokemon that I could easily set up trick room on just because he can't do that much to me, at least not with like standard sets, also just because Porygon 2 is so bulky and Fortress isn't the strongest Pokemon. So I could definitely send this in on Fortress and if he wants to go for a hazard like right away we go magic coat even if it doesn't consistently keep getting up hazards just even one spike or one stealth rock would be nice to help you know um so that was basically the set for porygon right there pretty easy stuff and let's see let's see let's see okay so next um this was originally going to be sheer force life orb steelix uh, because the damage was just so great against his team. Um, but then, as I was testing the team, because basically what I do with Steelix is set up Trick Room, then I send in Steelix and hit for as much as I can, then switch it out and then bring it back in at a later time. But with the Life Orb, um, it was originally these three moves and then Fire Fang for Fortress only. Um, but I decided against it because Life Orb was wearing me down so fast that Steelix became not a reliable sleep sweeper. It would come in and take out maybe like one Pokemon and then after that it was already too worn down from Life Orb and everything. So I decided to go with uh, more like just one that could live a bit longer to be able to rest and get the Chesto Berry off back to full health and then I could try and sweep again later. Um, so I did get rid of Fire Fang just because Vaporeon, Scald, and Sigilus Air Slash, they do decent damage and we'll be talking about Conkledur next. Conkledur actually does very good damage to Fortress with the set that we have. So I decided against uh, Fire Fang for Steelix. Uh, otherwise I have Heavy Slam and Earthquake just as like the strong stabs. Heavy Slam does a lot of damage to everything. Uh, even without the Life Orb it does a lot to Lucha, uh, Altaria, uh, Shiftry as well. And then Earthquake for things like Ninetales, Nidoking, um, all that stuff. And then I also decide on Smackdown because that basically if he brings Rotom and I send out Steelix and he's like, alright, I'm going to go into my Pokemon to like tank against Steelix. I can hit it with Smackdown and then it, uh, and then I can Earthquake it the next turn if Trick Room is still up and it forces him into like a bad position basically. Um... So that's why I decided with SmackDown, it really helps. Then I went max HP, max attack, just to have as much bulk and uh, damage as I could. And then a little bit in special defense, uh, just in case if it helps, like maybe against Rodham's Hydro Pumps or anything like that. So last, so we got Steelix. Um, we got Vaporeon as kind of like the cleric for the team and kind of just something to help us be a middleman to get from like one Pokemon to another to get from like Conkledur to like Vaporeon back to Porygon 2 or Sigilyph something like that. And then we got Porygon 2 and Sigilyph as our Trick Room setupers. And then we got Excadrill as our non Trick Room Pokemon. And then Steelix and Conkledur as our Trick Room sweepers. Now, Life Orb, Iron Fist, oh my gosh, the damage this thing does is ridiculous. So, like I was saying about Fortress, Drain Punch does so much to Fortress. I think like almost half if not half, um, whereas Fortress can't do much back to me, especially if we're going to be recovering HP like that. Um, and then we have Knockoff to hit things like Miss Magius, um, 
Musharna, things like that. Uh, knockoff is more just for like utility. Uh, Mog Punch for priority because it can one shot Shiftry. Um, and if Trick Room is up, our Mog Punch will go before his Sucker Punch. It also, uh, Mog Punch also one shots Cardogonal. Uh, so that's just crazy damage right there, like just to be able to pick off Pokemon. And then Ice Punch one shots Nidoking, um, Halucha, Altaria. It's just the damage is crazy. And Drain Punch does a lot to Rodham as well. Uh, but we do have to be careful not to get burned, and that is why I decided to bring Vaporeon with Heal Bell this time around. Uh, but otherwise, Conkledur just does so much, it's ridiculous. Uh, and we went max HP, max attack, a little in special defense. Pretty simple set. I keep bringing the same Conkledur set. Um, but it works. The coverage is really nice. Um, so yeah, that's basically the team right there. Also, as far as speed goes, because this is a Trick Room team, um, I might change what these are. Like this one, how it's like, it's brave, but it doesn't need to be. Because basically, the differences in speed between my team and Jacob's team are so different that the only Pokemon that even gets taken into account is sometimes Blissey and Musharna. That's it. Those are the only Pokemon where I'd have to worry about speeding, or I'd have to worry about outspeeding or underspeeding under Trick Room. Otherwise, we're slower than the rest of his team. Or the Pokemon that are meant to be fast, like Sigilyph and Excadrill, are faster than the rest of his team, regardless of uh, Trick Room being up or not. So the speed doesn't so much matter. Like you might see some IVs wrong or whatever, but the the speed really doesn't matter uh, this game as far as Trick Room and all that stuff goes. Uh, so yeah, that's gonna be the team, you guys. Let me know what you think down below. I'm extremely nervous for this battle. I. <laughs> I really don't have like that much faith in myself um, but one of the things also I noticed um, I forgot to say this part too while I was te <coughs> while I was testing the team sorry <laughs> um, I realized that if he brings all right here's here's what would happen when I would test the team I would put a lot of offensive Pokemon on his team against me. I didn't put, like, I never really brought Blissey or, like, Rodham really like that. Um, so I think his team can beat me fairly easily still. Like, this team was not extremely solid, but it's come to the point where I can't test anymore. I have to make the team because we're going to be doing our battle soon. Um, so, I realize though, he's not going to bring a full offensive team. He has to bring some kind of defensive answers for some of my Pokemon. So that being said, depending on how much of his team is defensive, I feel like we could have a good shot if he's not expecting Trick Room, because his team will be broken down into, like, his defensive mons, and then his, like, really fast offensive mons which those will lose under trick room if we can manage to get it up which means if we can beat through his offensive pokemon he will have nothing but defense left and we should be able to power through that with our sweepers so that's like an ideal situation right there and that's the only thing that's giving me hope is when i was testing my team i could not beat a fully offensive team with this trick room set because it would just power through anything that was supposed to be a wall and i didn't have switch ins to things um and like hazards going up against me too um did not work very well so i i could have a chance but we'll see what happens uh like i was saying leave your thoughts down below in the comments leave a like if you enjoyed and jacobs channel will be down in the description below so you can just see his side of the battle tomorrow when we do it uh normally he does the team builds like at the beginning of his videos so you'll probably if you want to see his team build it'll be before the battle uh all in the same video so just letting you guys know but yeah until then i'm new age Steel. keep on watching i'll see you guys in our week three battle against the green bay Pikachus. later you guys